When we met Eric Jacobs, a 34-year-old guy who calls himself the Nomadic Fanatic and has more than 70,000 subscribers to his YouTube channel, we were at the Bear Mouth Rest Stop, about 30 miles east of Missoula. You couldn't miss this guy. He's in an RV with this huge logo on the side, advertising his YouTube URL. Plus, he was blaring some tunes. He was outside, pacing and smoking. He turned out to be pretty friendly, inviting us into his home on the road where he was cooking up dinner. And we got to meet Jax. Hi, buddy. It's my, he's my special guy. That's so, so he's cool. He's got a cat tree there in the corner and his litter box there. You know, I've adapted a little bit to make it work for us. So when we looked him up, we got a taste of his videos. They're all about what it's like to travel around the country in an RV. I mean, he is, like we said, the nomadic fanatic. Jax, who's physically huge, is also the big star on the episodes. There are about 550 episodes now. So the thing about meeting someone who's an internet star is that there's a lot to find out. From our interview with Eric and some digging around online, we pieced together that he'd left film school at Evergreen State College in Washington. He's from around there, Olympia. He sold his truck for gas money, and he told his family he was hitting the road in an old Tioga RV he calls Tilly. Tilly's the RV he bought after breakup with his girlfriend. We were together for six years, and okay. when we had lived in two apartments, and then we had a house in Aberdeen, Washington, and um, we had actually one summer we had we had bought an RV. Well, she used her money to buy it, but we were going to go experience more of the outdoor stuff. So we we didn't use it a whole lot. We. Uh, Went on like three times in one summer, and I loved it, and she was not as thrilled about the RV experience as a recreation as I was. And I thought that was really weird because I was ready to go. I was like, no, we're not going to pay $600 for this when we can just own this and put our own money into it. So basically, he took off. And he took the cat, the now 25-pound cat. Jax was actually born under their bed. He picked me. He was the first one to crawl out of a little laundry room to be able to climb up this and walk over to the couch and climb all the way up my leg and... Just definitely. I'm, I would not be a cat person. And now I've turned into one of the biggest cat people on YouTube. So sure, there's Jax. There's Eric in a lot of videos drinking beer. It's almost always in the shot. When we met him, he was rolling around some Bud Light. But getting that many people to follow you on the internet, it has to be more than a camper, a cat, and some beer, right? When we started trying to figure out how he became a guy with so many followers, a lot came up. Yeah, so it turns out Eric has a bunch of haters dedicated to exposing him for who he really is or who they think he really is. There are like five Facebook pages about Nomadic Fanatic. One of them's called Nomadic Fanatic Truth, and it's supposed to be dedicated to calling Eric out on his lies. It gets nasty. Whoever's running the page called Eric the Nomadic Fraudmatic. There's stuff on there about him raising money for a documentary he never made. There's stuff about a lemon RV he sold to an elderly couple. The admin of the site is a mystery. When we sent a Facebook message to whoever it is, he never responded. With all this new information, we realized we needed to talk to Eric again. We caught up over Facebook video chat, and the recording's not great. Here's what he had to say about the Nomadic Fanatic Truth page. Yeah, no, that's uh, that's just a that's just a secret clan of people that are haters. Uh, there's only one that I know of that's a supporter page, and that's Nomadic Fanatic Unite, and that's kind of run by just a friend of mine over in um, Kentucky, I think, and. I don't want to have another I don't want to have a whole bunch of things to monitor and keep track of on the road. But look, he does throw the pot. Sometimes he does it with one of his videos. Let's listen to part of one of his fireside chats titled Gay Felon Con Artist. We'll skip over the part where Eric eats a hot dog and drinks a beer while some cheesy instrumental music plays. Believe me guys, haters want me to sit here and do nothing but correct the rumors and provide proof to validate Everything that they create is a fabrication. That's all they want me to do. So I promise, I will never, ju just like America will never negotiate with terrorists, I will never succumb and switch over to fighting rumors and lies. But he kind of does just that a couple minutes later. The trolls win. Okay, you win. Everything you've ever said about me is true. I'm gay. I have three children. I spent seven years in prison. I prefer chicken nuggets and tater tots over steak. Well, he was cooking chicken strips and tater tots when we met him. A lot of what's anti-Eric out there is about money. When we first asked about funding his life and whether or not he has a job, he just said he used to be a cook at several different restaurants. But how do you afford gas, food, like the basic life necessities? Here he is again from YouTube. I'm a con man who bought a cheap $600 and $27 solar panel, even though I ended up raising over 3000 despite the fact that I actually bought the exact solar panel that I promised to buy at the end of the campaign. But no, I'm a con man. 
He definitely was making that documentary about living the nomadic life. He created an Indiegogo campaign and asked people to donate. He raised more than $5,000. And commenters want to know, where did that money go? That's another thing we asked in the follow-up interview. Right, right. I mean, I guess that's a good point. There are several people out there would be like, you know, hey, I think that we gave this money to do the documentary, and where is it? And you're a fraudster. You know, you're a scammer. You, you know, you didn't, you didn't do what you said. But in the end, as far as the legality issue, I mean, I didn't give a time frame. I never gave a finish date. I never said what would inquire it to be finished. So the point is, once you make a donation of any kind, there's no requirement and you don't own a piece of the documentary. Some would call that deceit. So I flat out asked Eric, do you consider yourself a transparent person? I, 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 I am really an open and honest person, but when it comes to filming my life, I'm also very open about the fact that you're only seeing about 5% of my life on video. And that's, that's by choice. We contacted his ex-girlfriend, Jada Nielsen, to get some insight into what Eric was like off video and to find out if he did just run off with her RV and their cat. But Jada wasn't willing to talk with us. She did, however, contact Eric to let him know we were trying to talk to her. He sent us a message saying that she doesn't trust easily. Apparently, Eric's internet fame has caused some problems for Jada. As in, he says some of his haters have sent boxes of human feces to her physical address. His haters also reference his alleged criminal record. And that we can find out about. So we did. It ranged from suspended license to Class B felony for burglary. When we asked Eric, he at first said no comment, and then added, But I will say this, if you find one on there that is a restraining order from one of my exes in like 2004, that one is me, and that is still, I think it's a Olympia, uh, yeah, got, got, got a restraining order put on, and uh, it it went like two weeks or something like that, and then she didn't renew it. So that'll always be on my record. I'm never going to argue that one. <laughs> All right. So why the restraining yeah, order? What just... happened? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, in high school, I had a girlfriend who um, had written a love note to another guy, and uh, she, that guy ripped up the love note, and then another girl handed me that love note, and I had that note, and she got really mad about it and was basically trying to rip the note out of my hand, saying it wasn't mine, and we got into a pushing match. And then four hours later, uh, cops showed up and said, Eric, this girl says you choked her. And it was like, what the hell are you talking about? Like I said, it still exists there in paper. You can still find a temporary restraining order under my name. So After we ended the Facebook video chat, we were thinking about everything we had said and realized some things just did not add up. In 2004, the time of the two-week restraining order that he said happened when he was in high school, if he's going to be 35 on June 5th, which is what he told us, then he was born in 1981, and that birth date checked out on his records. Meaning that in 2004, he would have been a 23-year-old high schooler. So unless he was held back for a few years, pretty unlikely. Add on the fact that the restraining order never showed up on the background check we bought, and which he confirmed was his after he found out he changed his last name. I changed my name because um, I thought it was hard to pronounce my last name, and I thought that it would be more convenient to give, to move my middle name to my last name, and then that way it wouldn't be offensive to my parents. Eric never fessed up to the other charges, but never denied them either. Here's the thing. When we met this guy at the rest stop, someone who from the get-go clearly had a story, we were psyched. I mean, the RV, the cat, the YouTube... And here's the other thing. We are actually reporters, students who have learned a few things in journalism school. And people we meet out there, they're complicated. There's more to their story than they might be willing to tell you. We know there's more to Eric's story. But until we figure it all out, at least there are updates from the road. What do you see, Jax? What is it? Did you find water? Good boy. Talking to the Nomadic water. Fanatic, I'm Tana Wilson. Yeah. And I'm Jillian Wiggers. What is the rush back home? I mean, it's stinking beautiful.